So today I'd like to talk about a basic drum beat. How would you go about learning one as a beginning student? Students often will have difficulty learning how to play beats, learning how to coordinate, working the kicks, the snares, the hi-hats as one idea. We work with what we call linear coordination. Linear coordination means we're working with each limb at a separate individual idea that all comes together to work as one idea. We're looking at the kick, the snare, of the hi-hat, and the possible opening of the hi-hat or a secondary kick, which would bring in that fourth idea. So in the beginning, drummers will have difficulty coordinating their limbs and making a beat work. The other problem is tempos or speeds that we have to play or are required to play to play beats and play with our stuff that we're working on, songs, uh, general beats, things like that. So how do we learn to play a basic beat? Problem is I can't coordinate it or I can't play it fast enough. So I have a real simple basic solution that helps students start to learn this concept. So I call this a four step breakdown beat. Basically we're playing four different beats. We're starting with a simple beat and working through to a last beat, the fourth beat, that's a little bit more complicated and has more things going on. Basically, the hi-hat is what's increasing and what's changing. The kick and the snare are staying exactly the same. They're never really moving or changing from the first beat all the way to the last beat. Also, I have a video posted now that I usually start with beginning students with. It's Dream On by Aerosmith. Go check it out. It's an easier song to learn for a beginning student, and it has some more simpler patterns to be able to play in this particular song, including some of what we're talking about today. So go check that out. It's on my YouTube channel. Okay, so... What is this beat and how do we start? Well, it's basically playing the first part is just the kick and the snare. We're not playing the hi-hat at this point. We're doing two-way linear coordination. Two limbs only, no third idea. Okay, so this is how it's going to sound. So you can see I'm just playing kicks and snares, alternating between the kick on the right foot and the left hand playing with the snare drum. Something to note as a musician being right-handed, left-handed, having stronger right side, having a stronger left side, is when we play a drum set pattern, this does make a difference on what becomes our primary or our stronger side that we tend to use more often. As a more experienced player, we're going to want to use both these techniques. So we can be interchangeable and in playing a right-sided technique or a left-sided technique. Okay, so what does that mean? means that basically when we're playing a pattern, we're going to be putting either our right hand on the hi-hat in a crossed way, or we're going to be putting our left hand on the hi-hat in an uncrossed way. So right-handers tend to like the right-handed crossed hand technique, which means my right hand is the one that's on the hi-hat, and it's more controlling the pattern. It's a stronger side, which allows that right side, that stronger hand, to control the beat and keep the pattern steady and moving. For a left-handed player, we typically uncross the hands and we play with the left hand on the hi-hat, which now means my left hand is the control pattern hand. It's the stronger side for most left-handed people and it allows me to control the pattern easier because I'm left-handed. So we're going to talk about note structure as well right now. With all the instruments, we use note structure. Whether you play drums, keyboards, guitar, you're a singer, it works with everybody. Some people know how to read, some people don't know how to read. And I find as a student and as a teacher, it's easier to be able to work with somebody, easier to be able to use all the resources for a player learning 
to be able to read and write the language. I have a video about that basically talking about the advantages and things that you should consider when learning how to read music or if you're questioning whether you should learn to read music. So when we're looking at note structure, that involves what we would call quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, thirty-second notes, half notes, whole notes. And when we learn how to use this note structure, this language for music, it opens up a lot of opportunities for us as players. So I'm going to use that as a basic sense of how we're going to do things with this pattern here. And hopefully it's going to help make a little bit more sense for you as a student as you're watching this video to help you understand how to go about doing this and why we're doing this in the first place. Okay? So, what we're doing is we are playing the kicks and the snares on beat one, pattern one. Basically, what we're doing is we're playing the kicks on one and three. We're playing the snare drums on two and four. So, quarter notes are basically counting the number system. One, two, three, four. And each one of the kick and the snare is going to fall with those numbers. We're going to alternate, which is a very common thing that we do in the world of drums. So we're going to play the kick on one, the snare on two, the kick on three, the snare on four. Okay, so this is how it's going to sound. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we're going to work on pattern two. What we're going to do is we're going to add the hi-hat with a right hand. We're doing a right hand style. We're going to add the hi-hat with the snare drum. So we're going to be playing the snare hits and the hi-hat together on beats two and beat four. This is what it'll sound like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. So you see we added the hi-hat to the pattern. The bass drum, the snare drum are still saying the same. They're not changing, they're not doing anything different from the first pattern, and we're going to build off this concept. B3. We're going to add the hi-hat to the bass drum or the kick at the same time as well. So we're playing the hi-hat on the kicks and the snares. We've now changed the hi-hat to quarter notes. So we're playing one, two, three, four on the hi-hat, which now also means the hi-hat has become a leader. The hi-hat is now becoming the boss and it's keeping time. I kind of almost connect it to the metronome concept because it is keeping time and it is keeping things steady in most patterns. Okay, so basically we're going to be playing the kick and the hi-hat, the snare and the hi-hat together. So beat three is a little bit more complicated. It's giving us a little bit more variation, a little bit more life to the pattern, and it's allowing us to play all three coordinating ideas, three-way linear coordination. So the last beat is actually going to switch us to eighth notes on the hi-hat. So we're going to be playing a little bit more complicated pattern. I'll show you how this works. So we're going to actually play the same beat we just played on beat three, but we're going to add a hi-hat in between each kick and snare, and we're playing eight of them, eighth notes. So we're going to be playing a more complicated pattern with the eighth notes being on the hi-hat, which makes this a little bit more tougher to play. One and two and three and four and one. Two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one. Two, three, four. So 
So you notice that the kicks and the snares have stayed the same from pattern one all the way through pattern four. The only thing that's been changing is we're adding more hi-hats or more pattern to the hi-hat and making the beat sound more fuller and more things happening to it. So when we're playing patterns, we could realistically be playing beat one, beat two, beat three, or beat four for a pattern. Most of the time, that's not what we're playing. We're playing something above or beyond beat four with more kicks, more snares, more hi-hats, or a combination of those ideas. So when we're working on patterns, this is a great place to start with a basic concept, a simple concept that's easy to coordinate for students in the beginning stages. Start with pattern one, work your way up to pattern two, work your way through to pattern three, and then pattern four. Take your time. Don't worry about how fast you get there. Keep in mind speed, tempo is also going to create conflicts and com problems for people playing these patterns. So when you're practicing your ideas, you're practicing your songs, your beats, figure out where you need to start, what pattern you can handle to play a basic concept and work your way up from there. So why would we work on an exercise like this? And what's the purpose of doing something like this? Well, speed makes a lot of things difficult. Most songs are not going to be the slow, lazy, easy feel speed you're going to be playing your beat at when you're practicing it in the beginning stages. It does take a while for the coordination thing to happen and to get your body and your brain to work together. Often, too, the beats are harder to do because there's more stuff happening with those. So when a student is working on a song and they listen to a beat, they don't even really know where to begin to figure out what kind of beat they're playing or how this beat works. And also keep in mind, this beat does not work with every single song. The beats are generally very simple and very basic and stay within a certain parameter of ideas and feels. And this kind of a beat is very common for a lot of songs that we listen to. So as long as that beat is in that parameter and has that feel, this concept will work for you to be able to start playing the pattern and eventually maybe learn how to play the correct pattern or the more complicated version of the pattern. Also, as I mentioned, beat one does work with a lot of songs. So if you are working on a song, try this concept first, see if it works. Most of the time it does. Most students can handle playing a kick and a snare alternating back and forth. Keep in mind that you want to listen to the feel and you want to try to lock or try to match the kicks and the snares as you hear them. So what I'd like to do is put this all together, let you see beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four in a row so you can hear how they sound, how they change, and how they intermingle and work with each other. So I'll start the basic beat. I'm going to count it in with our stick click, and you can hear the feel and how it works. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. So what I'm hoping I've clarified and given you a little bit of an insight to what a beat is 
and how a basic beat works, especially for beginners. They don't have any idea of where to start and how to even go about learning or breaking a pattern down. As you work and you improve your skills, you'll be able to go beyond this and you'll be able to work on more difficult patterns. I would definitely suggest for you that are watching this video, consider learning how to read. Reading will help you a lot with note structure. It will also allow you to write things down. It will allow you to remember things a little easier and it helps me to break down patterns and see where the feels are, where the notes are falling, where the pattern is working between the kicks, the snares, and the hi-hats and also helps me memorize something a little bit easier because I have it written down and if I need to refer to the pattern in the future I can go back and look at it. So I'm going to wrap it up. Please leave any questions or comments in the space below. Let me know if there's something you guys are looking for me to play song-wise, a lesson, uh, questions, things that you'd like to hear me maybe play or talk about or discuss. Keep in mind, I do do private lessons. I'm here in my studio right now, so I do them here, whether it's in person, I'm in the Metro Detroit area, or online with Skyping. I also have my YouTube channel, so go check my YouTube channel out. All the links are below, so you can check them out, and you can find them on the net. And I hope that this helped and worked some ideas for you guys and made some sense as far as a basic beat goes.